This is Don at HowToAirbrush.com, Airbrush Technique Magazine. In this little video, we're going to go over Airbrush Lesson 4, as seen on How To Airbrush. What you're going to need is just some thin cardboard, some black paint. And for this, I'm going to be using Trident uh, water based paint. It's a new paint, water based paint out of Australia. But you could use Spectratex from Badger, Golden Airbrush Colors, or E-Tech. And I suggest just black. This is just a practice painting to practice your shading skills, your airbrush control skills. But I wanted to point out a couple of things before we got started. Number one is, to begin the day, I always practice. I always get warmed up, doing some dagger strokes, just to warm my hand up, my arm up. And the other thing is, what probably one of the most difficult things to understand with an airbrush is, less is more. The less paint you use, the better off you're going to be. Because you fill your color cup up, full of paint doesn't mean you have to use all that paint. In fact, you're better off just putting a couple drops of paint in your color cup and uh, going from there. The less paint you use, generally, the better the outcome will be. In other words, you want to use the surface of whatever you're painting as the highlight. You don't want to have to go back in and add white. So you want to use just a little bit of paint and build your color up slowly, no matter what you're painting. So that's my little tip for overcoming, overpainting is what we call it, using too much color. The other little tip I'll give you is, you'll notice when you're painting, you always seem to, eventually your, your eyes and your head will creep towards the painting. It always happens, no matter what you're painting, you need to learn to keep your head back and look at your, what you're doing from a distance because it's just a natural tendency just to creep forward. You're going to get closer and closer to your painting. You may not even realize you're doing it until you start thinking about it. But make sure you hold your head back, your shoulders square, and uh, you'll be much better off. Those are my two little tips to start off Airbrush Lesson 4 as seen on How To Airbrush. This is the video version of the written lesson. Um, it's not intended to, for anybody who's proficient with an airbrush. This lesson is just a little practice painting for those that are new to airbrushing. And I hope you get something out of it. With that, I'll change paper and show you what we're going to be doing. Okay, I've got some news, a new sheet of newsprint, which is what I practice on. It's real cheap. You can get it in any art store. On my easel, what I've done is just cut two hills out of regular old cardboard. They could be mountains, they could be hills. We're just going to practice our shadowing and our airbrush control. So to start off, we just want to take our black. And spraying half on, half off our little mountain stencil. We're just going to outline our mountains. This one we're going to bring down just freehand. And we're going to put some more in the background. Where they're placed really doesn't matter. It's just, this is just for fun. It's just a practice painting. Put them anywhere on your paper you feel like you want to. And we'll put another one here. Now you'll notice already that this one is the most forward hill in our painting. And then we have some that recede in back of those. So what we want to do is use our shading techniques to emphasize that even more. So just with freehand airbrush, you could use freehand template, I guess, if you wanted to. 
But to practice this, just you do it freehand. And you want to keep your airbrush, in this case, pointed away from the object that's in front. In other words, this little hill is in front of this hill. So when we shade this hill, we're going to be directed this way. And we're, again, we're just going to use a little bit of paint. I'm not going to go crazy with it. I'm just going to add a little drop shadow there. And then we're going to move on to the, to the rest of the hills, you know, depending on how you laid it out on your paper. This hill, this hill is behind this one. So we'll add a little drop shadow accordingly. And move to our other one. Again, pay attention to which way your airbrush is directed so that you can get the shading down correctly. Now this is the hill that's foremost in our painting. So we'll add a drop shadow here. And to further practice your airbrush skills, you can hard line these if you want. Notice my air is on all the time. I'm not shutting the air on and off. Just like we practiced before. About 30 pounds of air pressure with this water-based paint. And we have another rainy day in Florida, if you can hear it. This time of year down here is hot, muggy, and miserable. So we'll just keep building our drop shadow up. Pushing one hill behind the other. Again, pay attention to which way your airbrush is directed. And just build your dark, uh, drop shadows up slowly. They would be darkest, closest to the other hills, and then it would fade out as you get away from it. So in other words, in here it's going to be the darkest on top, where more light's going to get to, it's going to be lighter. Play around with this until you're happy with it. And just like we did in the island painting, we'll add a sun or a moon just by using any round object, a can, to top to a spray can or whatever. Place it wherever you want your sun or moon to be. And there you have your sun or your moon. It's that easy. Continue working on your shadow areas until you're happy with it. And there we have our little mountains. Pretty easy stuff. But it introduces you to using freehand templates and let you use your shading skills. Next we're going to add a few trees and we're going to use, make our own little stencil for that too. I've just done three triangles on top of each other, the small being on top. I'm going to cut them out and then I'll show you how to make some 
real basic uh, trees. Okay, I've cut my three triangles out. You just want them sort of random on the cardboard. Again, we're just going to stay with black for now. You're certainly welcome to do this with brown or blue-brown, whatever you like. And we're just going to put some trees at the base of these hills. Doesn't matter where. I prefer to make mine darker at the top and then fade it down lighter. You want to stay square to your, air, uh, your stencil at this point, not off to the side. And we're just going to randomly put some trees all over. Again, the theory, less paint is more. Uh, keep that in mind. You don't need to, these don't need to be solid black. In fact, you want them to fade out at the bottom. Pretty cheesy looking pine trees, but this is just for practice. Just to help you with your brush control and getting you used to using freehand templates and stencils. There's nothing wrong with using stencil in your artwork. Nothing at all. The trick is to make make it look like you didn't use a stencil. But a stencil, in a lot of cases, will speed the process up. And it's just a tool that all artists use. It's not cheating. Nothing wimpy about using a stencil. We'll just stick some in between the other trees we've already done real faintly. Again, by the amount of paint you're using and the op how opaque you're making these trees, you're bringing some of them forward in your painting and you're pushing other ones back. The ones that are in the background, the foreground up here, will be less opaque, or not as opaque, as the ones closest to you. I'm just going to go through and randomly put trees all over the place. They don't all have to be straight up and down. Put them on there any way you like. You want there to be a randomness, <coughs> randomness to this, so. Again, the ones in the foreground are going to be more opaque. The ones in the background will be faded or more transparent. And there we have our forest at the base of the little mountains we did. Now you can take your black and just go in and fill in some areas. But Again, less paint is more. You don't need to, this doesn't need to be all black. You want it to have some texture and some feel to it. These are trees, some are in front of the others, and you want to convey that in this little practice table. That pretty much is Airbrush Lesson 4, as seen on HowToAirbrush.com. You can go there and print this. There's a text version of this same lesson there. You can print it off if you like. This lesson is just, a, just meant to break up the monotony of practicing lines, dots, dagger strokes, and shading. It's just an, a fun way of 
creating a little practice painting that lets you practice all the elements we've been going over and put it in a design that you can recognize and have fun with. I mean, there's a million things you could do with this. I fully expect you're going to do a lot better job than I've done with this. You can play around with it. You can add whatever you like to it. Add some birds. A little dagger stroke. So that's airbrush lesson four. Again, you can print it off on howtoairbrush.com. Airbrush lesson five it gets a little more involved, a little more detailed. I'll have that for you pretty soon. So what we've gone over is less paint is more. In other words, if you fill up your color cup, you don't need to use every bit of that paint. The less paint you use, the more you let your painting surface act as your highlight, the better off you're going to be. Versus going in there and throwing white in there as a highlight. The other thing, the tip we went over is holding your head back. Don't get sucked into the painting. Keep your head back, keep your shoulders square. Brush control, you know, we want to informing your drop shadows, you want to be able to control that paint so it goes where you want, when you want. And our little introduction to not only using stencils but making stencils out of cardboard, it's pretty easy. I hope you get something out of this little lesson. This is down at How To Airbrush, Airbrush Technique Magazine. Until the next lesson, it's just paint, relax, and have fun with it.